Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be looking at a topic that uh, is very important to me and uh, should be important to uh, all of you guys as well and obviously in a time of such uncertainty you want a little bit of certainty and that's what these uh, stocks that we're going to be com covering in today's video should provide. Uh, not necessarily in a growth manner, but uh, as you guys can tell um, by the title of this video and by the title of these articles, I have pulled up in a dividend uh, manner. So you still have some sort of uh, constant income uh, coming in uh, and have some sort of a cash flow going on despite you know the markets potentially being in the tank. Um, so before we get into that, if at any point in this video uh, you do enjoy what you hear or enjoy uh, what you see, go ahead and smash the like button. Um, that's the best way to push out my videos to other viewers and uh, get them more views so we can continue growing as a channel. And part of that process is also subscribing to the channel. Uh, it's free. It's uh, really liking the video and subscribing is the best way to show your support, best way to tell me uh, that you um, enjoy what you see and you want me to continue producing uh, content for you guys. So uh, let's get right into it. So we have 15 super, sta uh, super safe dividend stocks to buy now. Uh, obviously, the article is a couple months old. Uh, this was in June. Um, obviously, the, the market at that point in time was continuing to climb. Uh, I'm going to cover up a couple stocks here, um, in particular out of the 15, uh, so not to uh, just have a uh, super long video here. I guess we can start with Home Depot, the first stock they have listed, and I would even put Home Depot and Lowe's. I personally like Lowe's better than Home Depot, but I think Home Depot has a slightly better dividend at 3.3%. Uh, coronavirus could mean deep trouble for retailers forced to lock their doors happy, happily for investors in Home Depot. The nation's largest home improvement chain has been deemed an essential business. Not only are its stores open, but they're doing brisk business. One of the few things you can do when trapped at home is fix the place up. I think a company like Home Depot is going to be a really uh, solid buy um, continuing on into maybe not necessarily just for like a growth perspective but obviously you know that could be there as well let's actually check what home depot depot stock holy cow so they're up quite a bit from the making of this article so they were at 181 and now they're at 266 and you've kind of seen a, a similar thing with lowe's i think lowe's was at like 60 bucks at a low point in in in, in the market situation obviously a, a pe ratio of 24 so they're not necessarily uh too uh highly uh, uh valued or or overvalued in it in any manner uh, i think lowe's is currently around like 160 um so these these companies have really taken off and really benefited uh from the uh, current situation going on another stock we'll skip over that one sherwin williams i would i would throw that in there uh the big problem with them is 436 dollars not super ac accessible to everybody and i think they're even higher right now they might be around 600 dollars uh, what's their ticker symbol? S W S H W S H W stock. Okay, yeah, see, <laughs> they're closing in on $700. So we're going to skip over them. Great company, 1.2% dividend yield. Um, it's If you don't know, they're the largest paints. Uh, coatings and home improvement companies in the world. So you're going to see a similar trend uh, between Sherman, uh, Sherwin Williams and uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and some of those other things. Uh, it's it, this is a dividend aristocrat, and I think Home Depot is as well. I don't know if it's going to tell us that here. Uh, this article is being very slow. Uh, home Depot is a longtime dividend payer that has raised its annual dividend uh, since. 2010 so it's not quite a dividend aristocrat yet if you don't know what a dividend aristocrat is uh, you have to be you have to increase your dividend uh, payout for 25 straight years um, and then you have dividend kings as well and that means you've been doing it for 50 years so you look at a company like coca-cola uh, or uh, I believe Walmart maybe as well um, be a dividend king uh, Microsoft's one we could touch on. Obviously, at this point in time, it would have been an incredible buy uh, with the NASDAQ going uh, absolutely bananas. Um, and then, obviously, a decent dividend on that. I still think it's a decent buy. It's at like 205 today. Um, 
so again there there's growth to be had there but it's such an uncertain thing but microsoft's microsoft you know they had the new xbox coming out that should bump the price a little bit um and and you know they i they have all sorts of um things in the pipeline obviously it's microsoft uh but you know i would have said the same thing about apple and you see a continued decline in a stock like apple uh we can keep scrolling a little bit more uh domino's okay this is this is by far the best pizza chain uh not not taste wise we're not going to get into that uh but stock wise it's the best run papa john's is in a bad spot uh pizza huts they're closing down um I believe there were like 500 Pizza Huts that got closed down. I mean, and then and then Little Caesars is actually a private company. But I think if you're looking at the the pizza world currently, you have Domino's and you have Little Caesars, and those those two are uh, leading the way, um, leading the charge, if you will. Obviously, a uh, uh, about a one percent dividend on Domino's Pizza. So if you have that 333 dollars to shell out per share, uh, then obviously this is a uh, good stock to be looking at United Healthcare again. You know you see two two forty on them, but about two percent dividend yield. You love to see that number. Visa uh, about one fifty seven, about one percent. Okay, everyone really knows what Visa is. Um, Humana three hundred dollars per share. We're gonna keep scrolling. Uh, Cintas uh, is a dividend or risk grab with more than three decades of annual dividend increases. However, although although the payout looks safe the top line might very well take a hit in the months ahead uh, uh, is perhaps best known for providing corporate uniforms but the company also offers maintenance supplies tile and carpet cleaning services and even com uh, compliance training as such it's seen by some investors as a bet on jobs growth so obviously you know if they're supplying things such as uniforms or uh, you know basic necessities whether it's cleaning supplies or whatever it may be um, you know that all of these things you know whether it's Home Depot or Sherwin Williams or even Microsoft you could throw in there there's a lot of these basic necessities and you could throw in a Walmart I don't think Walmart is on this list but you could throw in a Walmart you could throw in a Kroger um, these stocks aren't always going to have great growth potential, but when you look at something like Microsoft, obviously there is that growth percent potential, uh, but it's a little bit different than some of these other ones, but they're going to be really safe bet because they're going to be consumer staples. Everyone's going to need some of these things. And then you, you look at like a Home Depot or like a Menards. I don't even think, I, I can't remember Menards is publicly traded, uh, Menards stock. If I can spell, I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. It's not publicly traded. Uh, does not release finance. Unlike it's public. Yeah, so it's not publicly traded. I don't know if I would have necessarily invested in it, regardless. But they do have like some groceries as well. Um, so you can find some of those things there. Uh, then you have Mastercard, very similar to Visa, um, and then one more. You have Dolby. Um, so $52 there. Noted in the stock, it's a higher safety score than Dolby Laboratories. Dolby is a leader in audio, visual, and voice technologies for cinemas, home theaters, PCs, mobile devices, and games. Obviously, uh, cinemas have been greatly affected in this uh, situation, but you know, you've probably heard of Dolby Surround Sound, Dolby this, Dolby that. Uh, which rates DLB at a buy says the probability that the company will cut its dividend is zero. So obviously you'd love to hear that. Again, this, this article is a little old. Uh, Dolby stock, let's see where they're currently at. So they're up a little bit from the point that this article was written, but that's kind of uh, you know what can be expected because the article is written right around here, I believe. Yeah, I think it said June 2nd. So obviously um, up a little bit from there. Um, and, and Dolby's just a you know a, a timeless company that uh, let's actually see what the analyst sentiment is on a company like Dolby right now because this is actually a stock that I have never looked into personally. Um, it's three strong buy, two buy, and two hold. You got a one point six. Uh, its current price is well below the low on this one. Um, and then the average is there. So this is actually kind of an interesting play for both growth and dividend wise. A PE ratio is a little high is the only thing I find wrong with this one as I'm looking at it right now. 1.36% dividend. Um, 
that's actually a really interesting company. I would consider looking in at one more if you want to see a video on that where I break it down. Uh, we can get into that. But obviously, you know, the common trend we've seen with a lot of these, you know, you have a Sherwin-Williams that's around $700 per share. You have a Microsoft that's 200 You have a Home Depot, a couple hundred dollars, you know. Then you have some United Healthcare, $300. Uh, the common trend is these are very, quote-unquote, expensive stocks. Um, so let's take a look at ones that are more accessible. We have another article uh, uh, by the same uh, uh, Kiplinger. Um, so let's take a look at these 15 cheap dividend stocks under $15. This was actually released. Okay, so this article came out today. That's actually uh, very good timing for the making of this video. And again, we're going to scroll down to a couple that uh, could be interesting plays. I've seen this. United Microelectronics on a couple lists so far is a semiconductor wafer foundry that operates internationally but mainly in Asian markets including Taiwan, Singapore, and China. Unlike many of the higher profile companies that make their own branded trips, UMC, or chips, UMC is content to be the factory for semiconductors rather than researching new cutting end edge designs. Uh, let's go to UMC, UMC stock, because um, that's a really cheap 4.4 um, it's not a penny stock but obviously you know you see a dividend of five percent on that one um, and it's actually well higher than they have listed there uh, obviously close to an all-time high uh, which you know you don't love to see P ratio of 20 uh, let's look at the Yahoo finance breakdown of this so right around price target of 5.19 um, and then there's not a lot of reviews on it hold to buy sell to neutral sell to neutral buy to hold um, and that was actually in February so I think this is definitely they have a beta of 0.72 so I guess it's not super risky either that's an interesting play as well especially with the dividend okay so the the one on Google was obviously a little bit off of 3.13 um, I actually may have to pick up a couple shares of this uh, company just because of the fact that I'll have to do some research on it. But it's it's, it's a large size company. Uh, if you want to diversify in some foreign, because um, I believe it said they were based out of Asia. Yeah, so they're based out of Taiwan. Uh, semiconductors, which is a, a booming industry right now, obviously with everything moving online. Uh, so that's a very interesting stock at this point in time. Again, $4 is where it was sitting at. Uh, let's keep scrolling here. Less Lexington Realty Trust. I have heard about this company. They have about four. So it is a REIT. Um, if you don't know what that is, they specialize in real, uh, real estate investment um, that primarily owns single tenant industrial properties. Um, Ten dollars per share has been volatile in 2020, but that's kind of what you can you can expect. Um, if you it has been enough downward pressure to keep Lexington Realty Trust among the market's cheap dividend stocks, still LXP's future looks secure. That in part because Lexington's model is typically reliant on giants like Amazon.com, BMW, Caterpillar, and other mega mega corporations who are running one or more of its roughly 150 properties. In theory, there's risk when you have a comparatively small number of sites that rely on just one tenant, but investors quickly realized uh, these risks were relatively limited since the long-term leases from deep pocket clients were, weren't going to evaporate overnight. Uh, and then we can take a look at LXP stock because it did say they were kind of slammed. Uh, so they've recovered quite a bit. And that's what you can expect from a re You know, you're not going to get great growth. That would have been a great buying point, obviously. So would that uh, P ratio around 10 uh, with a 4% dividend yield. Uh, that's another interesting play. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of good growth out of it. Obviously, here's the max. Uh, the max was around twenty dollars per share, and the minimum was around two bucks. Um, but you know, it's it's remained steady right around that ten dollar per uh, share. And obviously, they're still paying a dividend at a time like this. So that's definitely an interesting play as well. Um, I can't remember if there were any other on this list. Um, so you have Monmouth. Uh, Monmouth, I, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Uh, that would be something to look into. I believe I have heard of them as well. Kronos, I've heard of them. Uh, Global Medical, 
uh, Unity Group, and then I believe the last one, okay, People's United Financials. One more I do want to take a, a quick look at is Gladstone Land Corp, ticker symbol L-A-N-D, uh, or land. Um, what they do is they buy up farmland throughout America, and then they, they lease it out to farmers and stuff like that. Uh, so they're making that income. And obviously, you know, land's a thing that it's a it's a uh, asset that's, you know, you can't make more land. Uh, that's just, you, you can't do that. Uh, so obviously, a company like Gladstone Land that's investing in land is a very safe, um, you know, uh, company to be involved in. Uh, with a dividend yield of about 4%, um, and then a P-E ratio, they don't have it listed. Uh, so again, this is not really a company that you're going to see a lot of growth out of. Obviously, um, if you had bought in March, then it would have been a pretty good uh, growth prospect, but this is a very safe company investing in land, uh, which again is a very good asset to be involved in. Uh, so this is just one more I wanted to throw in here. This is probably one that I will be buying a little bit more of. And then they have a couple, Gladstone has a couple other ones that uh, I'm sure there's plenty of videos on that I've seen um, that you guys should probably go watch if you're interested in what all Gladstone does as an investment company. Uh, so yeah, these are the these are the main stocks I wanted to cover in this video. Obviously, you know, if you have a little bit more money, maybe you want to invest in something that's more known, like a Dolby or a Sherwin Williams or something like that uh, to yield a dividend. But obviously, if you're uh, just starting out like me um, and you don't have a whole lot of money to throw around, or if you're in college or whatever it may be, um, you know, obviously you could invest in something like a Kronos or a, a Lexington or uh, whatever it may be or a Land. Um, so there's there's plenty of options for everybody. Even in a time like this, you know, dividends are always great because of the fact that it does provide cash flow even in times of uncertainty. So you're making some sort of income. Uh, so obviously, these are all great things to see. Uh, leave in the comment section below if there are any good dividend stocks that you guys are currently investing in, or even like ETFs or mutual funds, whatever it may be, that pay a good dividend um, for a fair price. Um, you know, whether they're good for growth as well, you know, that's always a plus. So leave that in the comment section below uh, if, if, if you have any of those suggestions. And once again, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll have one more video coming out to you guys tomorrow on Friday. Um, should be a weekly recap. Um, and I look forward to that, to talking to you guys again tomorrow. So until next time, happy investing.